This episode of The Young Turks is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook at audiblepodcast.com slash TYT. Go. Mike Huckabee, are you yes. scared of him as a presidential candidate? Dude, he's not going to get elected president. No? Look, the only, I, I don't agree with him politically. I will say I liked it, uh, some of the things he said. What? When you're into, I liked when he said that an armadillo is nothing but a possum on the half shell. <laughs> I thought that was awesome. <laughs> um, I mean, policy-wise. Right. Right. No. <laughs> He's a preacher. Yeah. He's a right. preacher. And how many angels dance on the head of a pin isn't really going to solve our nation's problems right now. You don't think so? <laughs> I mean, I doubt it. No, but the armadillo thing might. The armadillo? That, armadillo? Could, that well, could help. Uh, I, I, I'm not afraid of him as a candidate. I would embrace his I candidacy. I thought you thought he was going to win. I do, but I'm not. Afraid, that doesn't mean that I'm afraid of. I, I'd like him to win. I don't think that he would win the presidency. I'm, uh, I'm so I'm not afraid of his nomination. Oh, I thought you thought that he was a, a dangerous candidate. No, no. I just thought he was a viable candidate. Oh. I think that he's a, a serious candidate. Well, they're all potentially were. dangerous candidates. Well, yes, oh, right. that's true. I mean, there are some that are less dangerous than others. But like, I mean, but uh, well, I mean, I think that the, that the sort of the Mitch Daniels, Mitt Romney wing of the Republican Party as it stands right now, uh, and I'm going to you know open up a, 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 a you know what a Pandora's box here. I don't want either of these people to be president, but I. I think there are levels of danger when you see the types of people that will run for president on the Republican side. I thought uh, Mike Pence was much more dangerous than Mitch Daniels. I, I agree with you. He's yeah. apparently really not going to run, no. uh, at least not yeah. now. He's right. a 2016, clearly very serious candidate, especially if he's I totally agree. totally agree with you. And John Thune, I think, is a uh, is a dangerous candidate, yeah. uh, and he's not running. Well, it's interesting because John Thune is so socially conservative, and like when John Thune says he doesn't believe in evolution, I, I really believe he doesn't believe in evolution, yeah. whereas the other guys, like I think Mike Huckabee, does and says he doesn't because that's what he's supposed to say or believes both. He's very religious. I he mean, is, you know, but there's so a different. Right. John Thune seems backwards to me, but there's interesting because uh, uh, the uh, the DNC's executive director, a woman named Jennifer O'Malley Dillon, uh, she told Sam Stein back in July of 2010 that that John Thune genuinely scared her, not like scared her like because he's crazy. Yeah. Scared her because she thugs what you think. Like this guy is a serious politician. He works hard, and that this guy. Can win, and, and he's one of those seductive politicians, right? That too. he's that, you know, she, that that's, that's, that's those are the guy. dangerous ones, yeah. Um, but anyway, Howard Feynman was uh, on a conference call with uh, Mike Huckabee as he was promoting his book, which I think is, is out recently. Uh, like, yeah, any day. Um, and um, and she, he said on the conference call that he didn't sound like a guy who was running; that his stomach wasn't in it. He has very little ground support in Iowa right now at all, and that he, you know, he hates raising money. They all do, but he particularly hates raising money, and he hates the like, he hated those debates. He couldn't stand it because he is mm -hmm. kind of a bright guy, uh, and he hates that there's no substance in the debates and they're all this sort there's of. There's no substance in any of this and, shit. And right. Well, he, hate, he hates that, that there's no substance in the campaigning, and he has a reputation for being like a pretty good governor and a pretty good administrator. He doesn't hate government, so all this sort of grandstanding and stuff he can't bear it. He actually wouldn't mind running something, and so mm -hmm. he hates all that stuff. And Feynman didn't think he was all that serious about running. Yeah, I mean, I I read uh, Huckabee's response to that, where he basically said, you know, there's a lot of time to talk about it. There's a lot to think about. He's dealing with his book. I think he's going to run. I think that his support in Iowa has not evaporated at all. I think yeah, that that's what goes, really launched him in a way. Exactly, and I, so I think that that kind of support, if any, <coughs> if anything, will have grown. Um, and I don't think that he is distasteful to the wing of the Republican par the party that that is going to go up against Mitt Romney. I also think he cannot stand Mitt Romney, yeah. and he would embrace the chance to go up against. Mitt Romney. Let's uh, listen real quick to Huckabee on that, responding to whether he would run. Uh, this is not that r revelatory, revelatory, or no. revelatory. Not with uh, George Stephanopoulos on uh, Good Morning America or whatever show it is. George Stephanopoulos hosts. It, it is a, a very grueling process. George, I don't have to tell you what it's like to go through this whole grinder. And I think the fact that I've done it before gives me both a sense of, uh, of gravity toward the process, but it also gives me an understanding that uh, it's not always smart to be the first guy out of the corral and out there in the arena riding around on your pony by yourself. You know, I'm thinking very carefully. I'm very seriously considering making a run for it. But when on the do you other side, I think it's summer. You know, and I know for a lot of people that's really late, but I, I remind people that a gentleman you know very well, Bill Clinton, announced in October, October. of October 91 so and ran time. against an incumbent. Um, so he also said in that same interview, which was. Uh, Interesting that uh, when Stephanopoulos asked him about the, he gave the best response any Republican's given to the sort of the birther 
and the Muslim issue. Which was like, yeah, it's nonsense. We're wasting our time. Like, just, it's silly. He didn't say, well, if he says it, it's good enough for me. Yeah. He was like, it's nonsense. And he was like, and then he kind of, in the because so, he is likable. And he was like, and look, if there wasn't anything to it, let me tell you something. Hillary Clinton's people, they'd have found it out. Um, <laughs> well, know, they'd have found yeah. it out for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, so that was amazing. I don't think he's dangerous. But I, you know, who knows if he's going to run. What, they, what these guys do is, first, if you're going to run, you've got to kind of give up everything else you're doing. Yeah. And for someone like Huckabee, who's probably making real money now, right. if he doesn't want to give that up, same way Sarah Palin's not going to want to give it up. Yeah. If and they're making money and you don't come from a lot of money, you want to keep making the money. Because once you announce, it's all gone. Yeah. And you're opening yourself up to any possible outcome. And he also has a one thing happened to him in a national way between the last time he ran and this time, which is that a police officer who he, or a, a prisoner who he furloughed, Killed police officers in Washington State. Yeah, that and won't that won't come up. No, no, I don't think they'll mention it. But no, but I mean, there is a history in electoral politics of of furloughed prisoners coming in to haunt a candidate. Fortunately, he's a Republican, so it won't matter. Yeah, but, you're a Republican. Yeah, yeah. They'll just, won't make any just difference. fall off his back. But I, I, you know, there's that that he might not just want to deal with a, a dark side to his. So uh, Mitch Daniels, the guy you're afraid you're yeah. afraid of most uh, in terms of well. You know, afraid of running against the president? Yeah, I would say uh, that he would be the kind of politician that would scare me the most. He or Mitt Romney, but Mitt Romney, I don't think, could get the Republican support that, that Mitch Daniels could. I'm yeah. not scared of any of them running. Really? Uh, look, oh, I don't mean scared. I, I mean, listen, not, if one of them's going to I'm not run. a huge Obama lover. Yeah. I think he's fucked up a lot of things and didn't take the right stands on a lot of issues, but there's nobody in the Republican Party that's going to beat him right now. And, not and unless not, the economy really Not to mention the way the, their, their party that. is. And I, I also assume the jobs are going to get better by them. I really think the president's going to win. I mean, I don't think that there's, I don't think that any of these 10 or 12, the dozen people that might be running have a chance of beating the president. I think that their party is in such dire straits right now that it's, uh, it's going to be difficult for them to rally around one candidate. I mean, it was difficult for them to do it with John McCain, and it's gotten worse since then. So I do think that that's going to be problematic for the no, party. For a while, I thought Chuck Hagel was going to run. Yeah. But again, he wouldn't. It's, he would bring he, the same problems in, in the party. He brings the, the party. same problems in the party because you've got some people that you could say, oh, you know, right. they could be somewhat moderate or they may be good at what they're doing, but you've got to get past the buffoons. I think I think Jeb Bush is honestly the one that would scare me the most. Jeb I Bush think. ain't gonna run. No, man. Well, okay, but it doesn't matter. He ain't gonna run. Whatever you say, I, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm just saying he is the candidate that would scare me the most in terms of being able this to This country Obama. will never elect a third. <laughs> um, man. Right. Yeah, anyway. Audible.com is the leading provider of audiobooks. In fact, they have over 75,000 titles. And you can listen on your iPod or your MP3 player. You can uh, listen to it anywhere, at any time. It's incredibly convenient. And they have books in every single genre imaginable. You can get a free audiobook if you go to audiblepodcast.com slash TYT. Totally true.